Israel and Hamas have agreed on a deal mediated by Qatar. What are the terms and what does it mean for the people of Gaza? Health facilities and health workers in Gaza have not only been attacked but also demonized. What is their response to this multi-pronged offensive? This is the Daily Debrief. These are your stories for the day. And before we go any further, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. Israel and Hamas have agreed on a deal whereby Israel will stop its brutal offensive for four days. Hamas will ensure the release of 50 Israeli hostages and 150 Palestinian prisoners will be released in return. Now to be clear, this is just a pause. There is very little anticipation of this turning into a full-fledged ceasefire. We go to Abdul for the details. Abdul, thank you uh, so much for joining us. Over the past few days, we've been hearing reports of a true some kind of a deal. Of course, nowhere close to a ceasefire which Gaza desperately needs. But uh, could you maybe first tell us about what are the details of this agreement? Well, as per the reports, uh, uh, as uh, the Qatar government announced that uh, there will be a ceasefire uh, for four days, uh, starting uh, in next 24 hours, the Hamas representative said that it will it may start on Thursday uh, by uh, Thursday afternoon. And that is the deadline. Uh, basically, it is related to since both Israelis and Hamas have approved have approved the deal, uh, they are waiting for uh, a legal period which is mandatory in Israeli uh, law. That if the parliament, Israeli parliament, wants, it can basically go to court questioning the authentic, the legitimacy of the deal. And that's why they are waiting for the 24 hours to get over so that they can go went, go ahead with it. Uh, as for the deals, uh, whatever details are uh, available in, uh, in, in media, uh, Hamas has agreed to release uh, 50 uh, Israeli captives, uh, captives. Most of them are basically, some of them will be the foreign citizens, Israeli foreign citizens, and some of them will be the Israeli citizens. Uh, mostly uh, in return of 150 Palestinians being uh, basically released from uh, different Israeli prisons. Most of these uh, 150 would be women and children. According to the latest report, there are 8,000 Palestinians, more than 8,000 Palestinians in different Israeli jails. Uh, and around 97 or 100 of them are women. 150 uh, odd uh, uh, people are children. So uh, some of them will be released uh, uh, in exchange of this particular deal. Uh, it also said that the Israeli Israel claims that it is only for four days. And if Hamas wants it to be extended if for any days further uh, to it, it has to release 10 hostages every day. So if it releases 10 hostages, additional 10 hostages every day, there will be one day extension in the ceasefire. Otherwise, after the expiration of the fourth day, there will be, uh, Israel will resume uh, its uh, military operations inside Gaza, which includes bombing and, and the uh, ground offensive as well. Um, uh, I think this is uh, the major details of the ceasefire deal, which is there in the public. I believe there will also be an increase in humanitarian as well, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, that is part of it, uh, that uh, Israel has agreed to allow more trucks through the Rafah border. Uh, it has also, basically, it also would mean that, uh, though the details are not out, it would mean the fuel and other medical supplies which are required uh, to run the basic facilities in side Gaza will also be uh, increased. It, it, it is not restricted to the food aid only. Abdul, of course, uh, you know, the, while even one day's uh, you know, reduction might uh, provide relief to people who are really suffering, I think this also throws into focus the fact that the international community especially has failed massively in ensuring a larger ceasefire, which has been the demand at least of people's movements across the streets. And Israel has also been uh, quite defined in, you know, refusing to heed any of the UN resolutions. Exactly. Uh, the UN Security Council, after kind of uh, failing for many, uh, uh, in many attempts uh, since, Octo since October 7, finally uh, kind of agreed to a kind of uh, truncated uh, humanitarian pauses. Even that Israel did not agree. Uh, uh, 
uh, and of course it has basically refused to agree to the larger resolution passed by the general assembly earlier and uh, uh, despite the fact that the us uh, different diplomats including the us uh, of high officials claimed that there is a need urgent need for the cease f- for humanitarian uh, ceasefire in gaza israel never uh, bothered about uh, responding to those uh, uh, those appeals and those uh, uh, demands made by a uh, different uh, set of countries including some of its close allies and that shows that israel uh, does not bother about the opinion of the larger world community and it's only basically trying it's guided by the uh, uh, its uh, larger attempts to kind of ethnically clean uh, gaza and to kind of if you see the uh, the uh, the statements made by some of the israeli uh, foreign uh, uh, israeli ministers including some ex ministers on israeli tv they are still talking about ethnic uh, cleansing in gaza in fact uh, when the uh, the decision was proposed uh, when the deal was proposed in the meeting by netanyahu some of the ministers uh, three of them uh, including ben guir uh, the extremist Uh, right wing uh, minister refused to uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, agree with it and in fact they made a public statement that such kind of uh, pauses will ultimately lead to the strengthening of palestinians or uh, it can basically it will be harmful for the israeli interest nobody knows what that israeli interest is except for the fact that it seems that they want to kind of completely wipe out palestinian population from uh, uh, from gaza Well, but do you also see this uh, four-day pause in fighting as providing the grounds for some kind of a, uh, you know, a further discussion, the possibility of expanding this, or especially will Israel look at this as an opportunity to sort of, you know, mobilize its forces further and uh, continue attacks? Well, it depends on how uh, strong the uh, pressures are, are pressure on Israel is. If the US is willing to. Uh, uh, extend the uh, basically it is on the us and other world powers if they are willing to continue with it they can force israel to do so but uh, it is uh, very unlikely at this moment given the fact that israel the the domestic politics in israel is such where netanyahu would like to continue uh, uh, the offensive um, so it, it is not sure whether uh, the uh, the us even us is trying it will be able to kind of pressurize netanyahu to kind of ignore the uh, the its own domestic calculations uh, in in israel so that is one of course apart from the fact that uh, this this four days uh, uh, pause may give some kind of relief to palestinians uh, one should not uh, kind of think that this may ultimately lead to peace because as i said before uh, israel is at this moment has not agreed to any long term uh, uh, pause uh, any long term ceasefire and this is practically a deal related to the hostages because there was a very strong uh, uh, pressure pu- uh, 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 pu- uh, push uh, sorry put by the uh, families uh, of those uh, israeli uh, citizens who are being taken hostage and they have been able to pressurize the israeli government enough to basically look for a, a way out for the ex- uh, to exchange the hostages with the palestinian prisoners or with the ceasefire even if it is temporary so nothing beyond uh, that is uh, uh, look uh, looks a possibility at this moment but one does not know if there uh, the, the diplomatic uh, uh, pressures uh, will work or not we, we should wait and watch Well, Abdul, thank you so much for that analysis. We'll get back to you as this pause progresses, and we see how some of these details are being executed. Since the beginning of Israel's brutal assault on Gaza, the enclave's health system has been especially the focus of attacks. The cases of Al Shifa and Indonesian hospitals have hit the headlines, but the attacks have affected every aspect of healthcare in Gaza. Added to this is the constant demonization of health workers. On Tuesday, health activists spoke of the impact of this attack and what needs to be done urgently. and our rachar the people health movement joins us with the details and i thank you so much for joining us the health impact of this very brutal war has been something we have been talking about quite often on this show and you know of course the instances of al shifa and in indonesian hospital are you know staring us right in the face but also at so many levels 
uh, you know, the destruction has taken a toll. So maybe before we go into some of the discussions that took place uh, from by people's movements, from activists across the world, maybe could you give us an overview of how the health situation right now is, what has been the impact of this kind of this attack? Well, essentially what we've seen over the past five years, uh, five, five five weeks uh, or so, uh, is very related to how the health system in Palestine has been treated and has been attacked by uh, by Israel uh, over the past uh, 75 years plus of occupation, of course. So, uh, you know, when we talk about the attacks on the hospitals, when we talk about the killings of the health workers, when we talk about the obstructions of the ambulances, uh, we're not talking only about what has happened since October 7th. We also have to consider, uh, you know, how the situation has been uh, before that. And what we know, uh, even from very recent examples, you know, only months ago, uh, people were still reporting, the WHO was reporting, so UN agencies were reporting that healthcare in Palestine was suffering severe attacks. So, you know, that ranges from people being stopped while they're driving patients from one place to another. Uh, their ambulances are being searched. Sometimes they are attacked. They are attacked with tear gas. They are attacked with weapons. Some of them in previous years, they were shot. Uh, so uh, it's kind of what has happened is that there was uh, a health system which was repeatedly undermined and which was put into question by these Israeli actions. And essentially, uh, it's easy to imagine, you know, that it uh, weakens the health systems a lot in uh, when we're talking about the physical and the material conditions that people are working in. So, you know... Um, Another thing that uh, we've been hearing a lot about for the past fi uh, five weeks, uh, which is, of course, you know, something that has to be stressed over and over again, is the shortage of materials. But it also has to be said that, you know, there was a shortage of medical supplies in Gaza even before October 7. So, you know, they were nowhere near uh, having all the essential medicines and all the essential medical supplies that uh, a hospital and a health center needs to, to actually provide the care that, that people uh, require. So um, in this kind of context, of course, it makes it even worse when we see that uh, over the past days, we've uh, again hospitals and health centers have been uh, have been bombed. They have been attacked. They have uh, they have been uh, there have been sieges on hospitals essentially. So you know that's some that's not something that uh, that's acceptable at any point. Uh, that should be accept acceptable at any point. Uh, and it is essentially what Israel has done. It has put medical workers at gunpoint uh, and forced them to either march, leave their patients, or uh, stay behind and provide care and work uh, in very, very unsecure conditions. Right, and of course, one, like you said, one of the key aspects has been the very deliberate targeting of uh, health facilities and health workers on the one hand, and also, I think, in terms of propaganda, the demonization of health workers, you know, and health facilities, uh, basically conflating them with, uh, uh, with for in 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 the in in the Israel from the Israeli uh, propaganda methodology, conflating them basically with terrorists, calling them terrorists endlessly, and making it seem like every medical facility is basically out to uh, is at war with Israel. That's really the kind of picture they're sort of painted. But in this context, could you maybe talk a bit about how health workers? have been responding, some of the voices that came out in the discussions yesterday. What has been the kind of pushback for the response by health workers? Well, of course, you know, the first thing to to say is that uh, the, the voices that we are hearing from, from Gaza and from, uh, from other parts of Palestine is that health workers are still there. So they're very committed to stay, uh, stay with their patients. Many of them have reaffirmed over and over again that they would not leave while there are patients, while there are displaced people in the hospitals, taking refuge in the hospitals, and that they would stay uh, independently of what uh, the Israeli occupying forces do. So that's you know that's the strongest voice that we we've heard from uh, coming from from the uh, Palestinian participants uh, in this discussion yesterday. What has to be said also, and that's something that uh, I think should be highlighted even more uh, these days, is that uh, people have been working nonstop for five weeks. So at this point, they're tired. Uh, it's essential that additional medical teams are let into Gaza to uh, alleviate the burden that's currently being shouldered by by the health workers uh, who have uh, who have remained behind. And of course, you know, it's not uh, it's not also only about the physical stress, but we're also talking about the emotional toll, about the physical toll that people are now facing. Uh, you know, 
just hours before the discussion yesterday, we heard news of uh, Alauda Hospital in Gaza uh, being one uh, of the latest one in the um, of the health facilities attacked, and unfortunately, three doctors uh, were killed during that attack. So you know, uh, it's. Um, it's something that people, that health workers, nurses and doctors and ambulance drivers and technicians uh, are living with every day. So they essentially don't know if it's going to be their last day on the job or not. Uh, and in spite of all that, they're showing a tremendous strength in how they are coping and how they are working. Uh, I think that's also, uh, that's an additional thing that came out of the discussion yesterday. And that's, uh, you know, how much respect and how much solidarity these health workers have been inspiring for the past weeks. Because again, they have shown that health can look uh, in a very different way from what we manage, imagine. I think that for, uh, it would be fair to assume that for most health workers uh, in the global north, but also, you know, all over the world, it's quite unimaginable to work in the conditions that uh, the health workers of Gaza have worked for in the past five weeks. And still, they managed to provide uh, at least uh, a glimpse of care that people need, and uh, they're still you know, they're, they're still there. So uh, what's important at this time is, of course, you know, to, to reaffirm this call for a permanent ceasefire for uh, for adequate amounts of supplies to come in, of adequate supplies of fuel to get in, uh, to reassess what's, uh, you know, what kind, what rate of destruction we're talking about. It's uh, what, from what's been seen uh, in the last few days, uh, it's something that's, you know, it's, uh, it's, not quite imaginable because we're talking about hospitals that have been uh, that have caved in under under bombs they have been uh, essentially uh, you know we're talking about uh, a very large scale reconstruction that needs to happen uh, as soon as possible uh, this of course cannot happen while there's a war raging on uh, and of course it cannot happen un until uh, it's clear from where the from where the money and the budget is coming from so that's one of the things that um, yesterday was discussed it was tabled at least uh, and it's definitely going to become a priority in the future days so how do we reconstruct the health healthcare sector in gaza so it's uh, adequate to the people's needs and it's also done in solidarity instead of uh, something pushed on by by the global north right thank you anna so much for that analysis of both the health situation and also equally importantly what really urgently needs to be done to provide some kind of relief to the people of gaza at this point of time that's all we have in this episode of Daily Debrief. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. In the meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and follow us on all the social media platforms.